Hey folks, welcome to another video all about the bluegrass mandolin chop board. And today we're going to take all that info from previous videos about how to build these shapes, how to get that bluegrass chop sound, and we're going to put you in the game. We're going to play through some chord progressions to some classic bluegrass songs. But don't worry if you're still having trouble with these shapes because we're going to check out a few tips along the way that will help you transition from one chord to the next seamlessly without having to slow down or drop a beat or anything like that. And we're going to check out the relationships between these chords so that you can use these shapes to play in any key over any song. And we're getting started right now. So if you're new here, my name's David and I'm really into the mandolin. And if chances are you're also really into the mandolin, then you're in the right place because there's tons of stuff happening on the channel here weekly. So don't forget to hit subscribe and that notification bell so you don't miss out on anything. So first up, we're gonna learn how to play that song I was playing at the beginning of the video. This is one that you probably know, it's called Nine Pound Hammer and it's one of the most classic bluegrass jam songs of all time. We're gonna learn it in the key of A because that's the key that Tony Rice plays it in and Tony Rice is always right. But before we get to playing this, we have to talk a little bit about chord theory, in particular the idea of the one, four, and five chords. You may have heard that phrase before at a jam to let you know what chords are coming up in a chord progression despite what capo or key that you're playing in. So if you're new to this concept, no sweat, we're gonna cover it in this video here. And basically, what the one, four, and five chords are, are the only major chords in any given major key. And it doesn't matter what major key. These numbers are basically showing us the relationship between the chords from one key to the next. And all we're doing is assigning numeric value to the notes on the scale, and then we're building chords on the notes that fall on numbers one, four, and five. So in the key of A, our one chord would just be an A, which is kind of obvious. Our four chord would be a D, and then our five chord would be an E major. So you can use this process to find the one, four, and five chords for any major key now, as long as you know the scale that goes along with that key. So if I have a one, four, five, one chord progression in the key of A, those chords would be A, D, E, and A. But if I were to now take that same chord progression and try it out in the key of G, I can use those same numbers to figure out what the chords would be in this new key. And all I'm thinking of is G is one, C is four and D is five in the key of G now. So I can play G, C, D, G, and I'll be playing the same song. If you know the numbers that are associated with the chord progression that you're playing, it's really easy to transpose from one key to the next, which is something you have to do a lot in bluegrass jams. Now there's a bit more that goes into chord theory, like how to actually build these chords or where do minor or diminished chords even come in. But this is really all you need to know to get started. And the cool thing about the one, four, and five chords, like I mentioned earlier, they're actually the only three major chords that you have in any major key. And they're also the most common chords that you'll find in any style of music out there. In fact, they're pretty much exclusively used in bluegrass. You don't find too many other chords besides the one, four, and five in most of the classic bluegrass canon. <laughs> And using your chop shapes to play the one, four, and five chords is great because there's this symmetry between the shapes in the chord progression that make it easier to play different songs or even songs that you've never heard before. So we'll keep this info in mind as we play through this song now. We're gonna check out Nine Pound Hammer in the key of A and to review, we're gonna start off with our one chord, which is an A major chord. We're gonna use our four finger shape and it's gonna look like this. The frets are five, four, seven, and nine. And for our four chord, we've got D major. We're gonna put our fingers on five, four, and seven of the A, D, and G strings. And check out that motion from the one to the four chord, or the A to the D here, because it's pretty simple. All we're doing is we're keeping our fingers on the same frets and we're moving up towards the ceiling or to a lower string to create this new three finger shape. Try making that transition a few times to get used to it. And lastly, the five chord is just two frets up from the D, and this is our E major chord. Our fret numbers are seven, six, and nine. Now hold up, I, uh, I know you might be kind of freaking out about how I'm fingering this five chord, but this is how a lot of mandolin players approach this chord and this key. And it's not mandatory, you can finger it the old way, but there are some advantages to playing this chord this way. 
So if you finger the V chord like this with your pinky on the G string, you'll notice that you don't have to shift your hand up or down the neck to get from one chord to the next. So from your one chord to your five chord and from your four chord to your five chord, it's all just here in one location, which might make it a little bit easier to play these chords. But if that still seems too hard, no worries, because you can still finger this chord the normal way using your index, your middle, and your ring finger. But whatever you decide, be sure to practice the transitions for all possible combinations of these three chords. Now let's get our right hand in action to actually play this song, and we're gonna start off with that basic chop strum pattern. Since we're in 4-4 four, four here, we're gonna be doing all downstrokes on every beat. We're gonna do a downstroke just on our G string for beats one and three, and then we're gonna play that chop on the back beat, beats two and four, where we play all four strings with that choked bluegrass bark sound. And the chord progression for Nine Pound Hammer is pretty straightforward. We start off with our one chord, A major. We're gonna play this for two measures. Then we move on to our four chord, which is D major. We'll play that for two measures. Now we're back to one for one measure. Then we have a quick five for one measure. Back to one, that A major chord, to finish it out for another two measures. Then usually that whole chord progression is repeated to get the full structure for the song. So let's try playing through this chord progression together at a slower tempo with the transcription on screen. But if this is still too fast for you, there's no shame in slowing it down further using that YouTube settings. You can slow this down to 75% or 50%. And if you can play it correctly at those tempos first, you're gonna be building up good habits that are gonna help you in the long run. but we're not gonna stop there. Even though Tony Rice is always right, some people choose to play this song in other keys. For instance, Ronnie Bowman plays this in the key of B flat and it just suits his voice better in that key. But since we know those numeric values for the chords in the original key, it should be pretty easy to transpose it to this new key of B flat. Check out the B flat scale here. So counting up the scale, you should see that we have B flat as our one chord, we have E flat as our four chord, and then we have F as our five chord. So if you remember those numbers for the chords in the key of A for Nine Pound Hammer, we had A is one, D is four, E is five, and A is one. And now all we're doing is we're taking those same numbers and applying it to B flat. And you're, you're already realizing it, it's pretty easy. We just have to shift up all those chords from the key of A up one fret. But it is helpful to think about it and to go through that process first so that it's easier to transition from key to key even when the keys are further apart. The important thing is to see that physical relationship from one chord to the next. And when you're playing with a four finger chop chord as your one chord, like we are in the key of A or the key of B flat, there's a certain consistency to the motion whenever you're going from a one chord to a four chord. You know, it's always gonna be just like that. Or there's always gonna be that same motion from the four to the five or from the five to the one. You can just come to rely upon those patterns and it makes it a lot easier to play songs that you don't even know because you know what these chords feel like. So now let's try playing along with Nine Pound Hammer in the key of B flat. Now, if you're still having trouble transitioning from one chord to the next on time with a good clean sound, here are a few tips that might help you on your way. First up, if it's too hard to change chords while strumming, try taking the right hand out of the equation altogether. Just try playing down strums at the downbeat of every chord change. Some people call these diamond chords where you're letting the strings ring out until the next chord comes around. This should give you some extra time and space to think about what the chord is that's coming up next and allow you to get there before the next chord rolls around. 
Next, I'd recommend getting your right hand back in the game and try strumming in tempo, but out of structure with the song. In other words, just try this. Try playing through the chord progression of this song without worrying about how long to hold out each chord. You still want to stay at a steady tempo, but you can camp out on that first chord of the song for however long you need to, to visualize the shape, the feel, and the sound of that next chord that's coming up. And then when the timing feels right, make that switch to the next chord without dropping a beat or slowing down. Might be a little bit strange at first, but it really gets our right hand back in action. Now let's just try isolating the movement between two chords within this chord progression. So let's take the first two chords of Nine Pound Hammer and just practice transitioning from one to the next. Two measures on A, two measures on D, back to A for two measures, and then to D for two measures, on and on and on until you start building up that familiarity with this motion. And lastly, in previous videos, we talked about building these shapes one finger at a time to build up finger independence, but now that we're actually playing these chords, we want to move all four fingers together as a unit. And this is super important, especially when you get to playing those faster tempos that we have in bluegrass music. And a good way to practice this is just lift up all four fingers at once and place them back down in position again and again. Once you get used to this, try it more rapidly and try transitioning from one chord to the next all without even using your right hand. This is gonna help us build up that muscle memory that we need to make these transitions as smooth as possible. So let's keep all that in mind as we check out the chord progression for another song. We're gonna look at another bluegrass jam classic. This is Dark Hollow in the key of D major. <laughs> You may have noticed in the key of D, we have D, G, and A as our one, four, and five chords. A difference here is that we're starting off with the three finger shape as our one chord, which totally changes up the relationship between chords that we got used to before. Let's check it out. From D to G, we have to shift down two frets and a string higher. From G to A, we're just shifting up that four finger shape two frets. And then now from A to D, we're keeping our fingers on the same frets and we're just moving that shape up towards the ceiling. And thankfully, when you're dealing with these particular relationships, I wouldn't worry about that tricky pinky positioning because you're gonna have to shift your hand either way to get from one chord to the next. So again, try to burn that relationship between the chords into your mind's eye because once you're familiar with how to use the one, four, and five chords in a four finger chop position like we did for the key of A or B flat, or now this three finger chop position like for the key of D, you should be able to play the one, four, and five chords in any major key out there. Just think, what shape am I starting off for with that one chord? And then the four and the five chord should just arise naturally because you already know the relationship. So let's figure out the chord progression for Dark Hollow. And this song is a bit more complex, but it's still pretty straightforward. To start off, we're gonna play that D chord for one measure, followed by a quick five chord on the A for another measure, then two more measures on D. The next line is similar. We're just gonna replace that A chord with a G. So it should be D for one measure, G for one measure, and then back to D for two measures. The third line is a bit different. We're gonna do two measures on the D chord, then we're gonna to go to that four chord for two measures, G major. And then that last line is the same as the first line. One measure on D, one measure on A, followed by two measures on D. So we're gonna play through the progression now, but let's add a little bit of a different strum pattern. Here's one that we looked at in a previous video. So here I'm playing down, down, up, down, down, up. Basically, we're just adding an extra upstroke after every chop. All right, let's play this. Here's the slower tempo with the transcription on screen. people also play this song in the key of E flat and the key of E. I also heard the key of C. So I'm leaving it up to you to figure out how to play this same progression in those new keys. And it would be great to try and figure all that out without any reference so you can really exercise these concepts. But 
If you find yourself wanting transcriptions for anything that you've seen here on screen, or even transcriptions for these new keys we just mentioned, you can find all that over on my Patreon page. It's kind of becoming an expansive database of learning resources for mandolin players, if I do say so myself. So check out all the stuff that's going on over there at the link above. Speaking of which, I've got even more videos on chop chords, believe it or not. So if you're looking for more tips on how to use these shapes to up your bluegrass mandolin game, I definitely recommend checking out the videos and playlists on screen here. Thanks so much for watching.